Welcome to the world of procedural content generation. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into one of the most commonly used algorithm in the field, Perly noise. Perly noise, also known as simplex noise, is a type of gradient noise that was developed by Ken Perlin in 1983. It's a mathematical algorithm that generates random but natural looking patterns, like the one we saw previously. These patterns can be used to create various types of procedural content, such as terrain, clouds, and even animations. Perlin noise is often used in game development and computer graphics to create realistic and natural looking environments. The algorithm works by generating random gradients and interpolating the values between them to create a smooth, organic pattern. These result in patterns that look random but also have a natural flow to them. Perlin noise is based on the concept of gradient noise which is a type of noise that has smooth transitions between values. The Perlin noise function generates a pseudo-random value at each point in a multidimensional space, using a hash function to map the input coordinates to random gradient vectors. The gradient vectors are then interpolated to generate the final noise value at that point. The Perlin noise function can be applied in any number of dimensions, but it's most commonly used in 2D and 3D spaces. Also, the algorithm can be adjusted to adjust the frequency and the amplitude of the noise, which allows you to control the level of detail and the scale of the generated pattern. In my implementation, like the one I did for the value noise, we have a configuration class that sets all the required parameters, and after that, we can simply generate the texture with a function that looks like the value noise function. We first have a frequency that tells us at which frequency we should sample our word coordinates in order to use them as control points. Higher values means further away control points, which simply means that we are zooming out our texture. Then we have a dimension parameter that I already explained in the previous video. Also, we have a bunch of parameters that we also used for the value noise generator. As you see, we have many common things between Perlin and value noise function. That's because Perlin noise is a simple derivation of the value noise that simply adds an extra layer over it. This extra layer is given by the new list parameter called gradient. Those lists one per each possible dimension defines the gradients that we want to randomly assign to our control points. The gradients in 2D can be as much as you want, though, in general, we'd rather use four cardinal directions plus the four diagonal directions. The noise generation function is really similar to the one explained in the previous noise video. First, we multiply the point coordinate by our frequency. We then get the control point's correct coordinate which I improperly named X, Y, and Z shade. And finally, we get the relative position of the point that we are analyzing with respect to our control point. We simply mask the control point value with a bitwise operation. It's just a way to compute a sort of module operation of our coordinates with respect to our hash list. This operation leads us to get the hash value, or in other words, the grayscale value of our first control point. Also, this time, we defined a mask for our gradient list, and we use it like that. After assigning a grayscale value to our control point, we can sample a gradient vector from our gradient list and assign it to our current and next control point. Then, we need to apply a function over our sample point that takes all the distances from its surrounding control points, which really depends on the dimension of the noise, and gives in output a value that can be considered the gradient value in the sample point, in respect to its responding control point. The gradient's functions are straightforward, except for the trivial 1D gradient, we have a dot product between the gradient vector and the vector composed by the distances of the sample point from the respective control point. The dot product simply outputs the cosine of the angle between the sample point and its relative control point. So, the steepest the angle, the greater the value in output will be. Lastly, we do what we did in the value noise. We smooth the interpolation values and we interpolate over the gradient values by the interpolation values over the relative axis. 
And here we go with the final result. We can enjoy an awesome, soft-made, pearly noise texture and function that can be used for all of your personal projects. In conclusion, Perlin Noise is a powerful and versatile algorithm that is widely used in the field of procedural generation. Whether you're creating realistic game environments or animation effects, Perlin Noise is a great tool to have in your arsenal. With an understanding of the mathematical concepts behind this algorithm, you can create your own variations and use cases for it and fine-tune it to your specific needs. It's also worth noting that Perlin Noise has been widely used in other areas as well, such as music and audio generation, simulation of natural phenomena, and even machine learning and data analysis. The possibilities are endless, and the more you understand and experiment with the Perlin Noise, the more you'll be able to take advantage of its capabilities. Thanks for watching and happy coding! If you want to learn more about Perlin Noise and other procedural generation techniques, be sure to check out my noise function series. Now get out of here and start creating some amazing natural looking patterns on your own.